Hello and welcome to The Paradigm Shift, Conquering Fear and Aligning to the Awakening. I'm Mia Signs, your host, and with me this segment is Kirk Nielsen. Welcome, Kirk. Ah, thank you, Mia. It's good to be with you. It's good to have you. So for all of you who um, do or do not know, Kirk has some very cool books that were auto-written. So I'd like you to share with us your background story and about your books and how and how they were written, please. Well, <laughs> we'll do a nutshell version of that, right? Okay. You know, cause things, we only have 30 things, minutes, right? <laughs> yeah, well, okay, so let's do a quick little few sentence version. Well, um, I, I got connected with my spiritual guides about three or four years ago, and uh, one of the things that came up was that the message for me was to stop reading um, and uh, other books and stop going to workshops and that my, my guides would teach me personally. Mm -hmm. And so the way that that was structured is, is for me to sit down and uh, write a question and then listen and then write what came out, uh, what came, came to my head just in form of thought. Wonderful. And my spiritual, my spiritual guide in this case was uh, Nostradamus. That's right. That's right. I've, inter I've interviewed you before, like a year ago. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, um, and and the, and since then, which is very interesting, is is that at the end of that process, I, I wrote for about a year and had a stack of notebooks six inches high, and then that's where um, my books came from. Is all of my answers and my going to school with Nostradamus. Mm -hmm. So, uh, at the very end of that, a few months went by, and then. Um, I realized that, well, I got sick, started getting this message, like, look deeper into Nostradamus. Watch some movies about him. Read some more historical facts about him. Not the sensational stuff that he writes, but mm -hmm. the actual history. Mm -hmm. And so I found an old, old movie. It wasn't even available on CD or anything. It was, like, done in VHS time. And, and I watched it, and uh, I'm, I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, well, wh I, think I, I think I was there in that life with mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, well, I wasn't his dad, and no, I wasn't his son. And then I was like, well, who am I? How am I connected to mm -hmm. Nostradamus? And like, you I You are back, Nostradamus. I, I am Nostradamus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's really, I think, what spirit sides are. In the end, you realize it's you. Right. That's brilliant. Oh, my God, I never even thought of that. I never yeah. even thought of that because... Can, can we just jump right there? Good. For those who are on the spiritual journey, obviously, they always we always start out with our awakening process and working through it, and then we meet our guides, and we progress from there. We meet who we were in a past life and all that. That's brilliant. So apparently, I'm a man many times over then, because all my guides are men, and I, didn't, <laughs> and I didn't know that because I've always had my past life regressions or my memories as a, a woman quite a woman so <laughs> anyways the point is that's really that's really wild yeah that, and, and right at the very start I, I, I mean I remember reading because I go back and read those notes and in the first few weeks I remember asking him very clearly it's like am I you and he'd say yes and I go but are you you and am I me yes <laughs> <laughs> you're a riddle like, <laughs> it's like both are true and right. this is the point with people is to see on planet earth everything's this or that right I'm either this or I'm that. It's too, it, right, it's too narrow. It's both. It's mm, both. Right. See, that's the paradox. See, but, I mean, people human. see it as too narrow, right? Yeah. and it, 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 Right. Yeah. It's, it's both. And the point is, is that every person is everything. We're a holograph. Every person contains the whole. Right. So everything you're looking at is what you are, and then everybody else is having the exact same experience. Right. Yeah. And we want everybody to have the uplifted experience that that we see and know, right? Yeah. Well, and of course, while we're doing that, everybody that we're thinking we want to have that experience is who? Us. <laughs> <laughs> you mean I shouldn't care about everybody as much as I do and care more about myself? Well, the point is you just need to realize that everybody you're caring about is yourself. Right, right, because we're all one. That's, yeah. that's the point. Is, is like when you start caring, you know, I, I care about other people so much, and it's because it's you. You know, that's really a um, mental bender to wrap yes. your head around. And um, and for the newbies or people who are not believers yet, they're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, it's it's hard for people to understand that. But if you break it down, you will understand it. Totally. In yeah. fact, just go to, to Wikipedia and read about holographs. Ah. 
Okay. That, 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 in a, in, you know, how holographs are created is, is that, you know, how, like, pictures are made of pi pixels, right? Right, right. So in a holograph, they're made of a bunch of pixels, so to speak, because they don't use that word. But, like, but each one of those little pixels, if you could just imagine it, contains the whole picture. Uh-huh. Yeah, cool. And you've seen those pictures where it's like a picture made right. of pictures? Yes, it's yes, like yes. That. yes. It's like that. It's like that. Wow. That's really, <laughs> that is mind bending. Yes. <laughs> of course. Hey, we're on the Mia show. You know, yes. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody who's like, God, those two are wild. Yes, we've, we've, uh, I've interviewed Kirk a couple times on my radio show and on, on my other web show, so. That's why we can be like this. Yeah, totally. We just get right into it. Right? Exactly. No and, and actually, um, I had an experience. Um, Kirk may not understand it, but I've, I've actually been married to Kirk before. So that's... I like that. That's my... Yeah. <laughs> In a past <laughs> life, I think, so... I think, I, I think I'm going to tap into that. I would like to explore that a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm blushing. Um, it's just something everybody knows on the show is she's never told me that, and so you're like getting it. <laughs> no, you haven't. <laughs> I actually told your ex-wife that. <laughs> oh, that was me, but I mean, I, I, it'll, it'll be pretty close. She's like, but, she's like, wow, really? And I'm like, yeah, it's really freaky. <laughs> and see, this is this is the point. Is it, it isn't shocking to me at all because I realize that when, like, you know, I have a connection with another person and. Just when I see you, when I hear you, when all of a sudden we, we it's just like, oh, there's something there. There's a pole. There's a right. mag magnetic exactly. pole. And it isn't necessarily like, it doesn't have to be physical attraction. It doesn't have to be anything to do with this life, but exactly. it's there. And the point is to acknowledge that. I believe our souls are magnetized, our mates, our soul people, our soul yes. unit. And it's. I think that that's brilliant. I was explaining it to a, uh, um, a Catholic boy. <laughs> Catholic man, <laughs> and um, and he was like, "This is this is really wild." And I said, "Have you ever had a déjà vu? It's not really a déjà vu, but that's how you feel, and and you feel like, oh my God, I've been there before with that person, and there's that connection." He's like, "Yes, I understand." And I said, "That's generally when also you meet your past mates or people you've, you know, uh, they don't have to be your mates, but they can be people in your unit that you travel with—a brother, a sister, you're, you're, a cousin." You're, you're, yeah, you're yeah. Family, essentially. Exactly. So, exactly. And, and, to, and to take that one step further, there's a couple of clarifications that have been really helpful to me. Is is that um, uh, um, and Bashar talks about this? Is is that he, the way he describes it? Is is that these are simultaneous? Because um, everything is now. Mm -hmm. okay, there, there isn't time. You know, right. we make up time, right? So there, there's no such thing as linear time. Mm -hmm. We just make it up to experience it as linear time. So really, that life that we're talking about is happening now. Yeah. So when you're doing that cross connection to that mm -hmm. and like tapping in, really, me and you are married now. That's that's what's so <laughs> freaky, you know. That is so 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 freaky. Yeah, I know. And so and so we always go past life, you know. But really, there's future life. You yes. know, we use those words. But in fact, what we're doing is tapping into the now. At that now. And there's a now back at that now. Okay, I'm really glad that we're talking about this because this is part of fear for people to understand this. So this is perfect because... Exactly, excellent. Yes, exactly. Um, this is awesome. Um, there, We also live on alternate universes within the same time continuum. So um, with other people, other experiences. Um, so that is really... Amazing too, because as you start to become more spiritual, you actually can move through and into another zone and, and bring back your memory. Um, I remember a healer told me several months back, um, "You know, you're already experiencing your time continuum or uh, living an alternate life." And I'm like, and then I just was like, "Oh my God, I thought they were dreams!" You know, just really, really, really wild. Very often your dreams are um, kind of screens, you know, because you, you, it, it's hard for us to accept that that's really happening, right. and so our, our, our physical makeup will present it to us as a dream. Right. When in fact, that was an experience. Right. You're having that experience, and then you think you're dreaming it. You right. Know? It's wild. So we, as we're, um, we, we jumped off camera for a minute um, because everybody's excited in, in the room here about what's going on So um, in our interview here, so we're back on now. And um, we're not, Mia's not frazzled. <laughs> Mia's not sidetracked. We are talking about um, alternate universes, time continuum, all the things that seem to scare um, newer 
um, souls or people in their newer awakening remembering process because we know everything it's within us and we're connected to the divine so the remembering is what we're doing and talking about right now so yes. so go for it Kirk tell us fear. more fear fear let's talk about fear a little okay. bit and I'm going to tie yes. this back into what we started with which is uh, the spirit guides yes and and them being different than us and yet at some point us realizing we really are them so Back when I was starting to do that, I was just a mainstream thinking person. Like, I thought like everybody else, right? right. I was just coming into this realm. Yes. And I, and I thought everything was separate and, like, you know, that I was here and they were there and they were different and I'm me, mm -hmm. right? I didn't, I didn't have all this stuff we've just been talking about, like, we're all one thing. Right. So the way that my guides set it up, the way that so that I could wake up was exactly what I could handle. Mm -hmm. So what I was giving is, was like, Kirk, you're talking to another person. And like, if I did it that way, then I could accept it. That was acceptable to my, to my mind. Right. And so when I would uh, write a question, Nostradamus would answer, and I thought it was something separate, mm -hmm. and, and the, he, come back this answer, and it was a, a, a fantastic answer, like amazing, kind of blow my mind. Yes, like yes. I would be writing, and I'd be like, oh, God, thank God that this isn't me. <laughs> <laughs> because this is the dumbest stuff I've ever heard. This is so ridiculous. I would never write this. I'm so glad that it's not me, because uh -huh. I could never accept it. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of fear in me about being something that was outside of the mainstream. And so it had to get presented to me as though some other fantastic person from some other realm was giving this stuff to me. That I, and I didn't have to take any responsibility for it. Right. So there was a lot of fear in not being accepted if I said such things as I was writing. Mm -hmm. you know. And, and I never even thought of publishing the book. you know. Cause, and then I was always really happy. Well, if I did... It's not me, so I don't care. <laughs> Except for your names on it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but I, I can always blame it on the channel. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I like blame on that, and I love channels because they're all like, "Yes, I've told this. It has nothing to do with me, but I'm saying all this stuff." And I'm like, "Dude, it's just another part of you saying right, that." Right. You know? Yeah. So anyway, the thing about fear, the point that I was going to make is, is that um, you know, take it. You know, for myself, I I was very. It was very good that I, I got it presented as though it was somebody else because I could slowly take it a bite at a time that I was really more than what I was. As I expanded my beliefs, as I stretched them out, I could I could just take it a bite at a time and I could slowly grow into it. Because if someone just came and told me, in fact, he told me in the first couple of weeks, hey, I'm you, you're me. Mm -hmm. I couldn't hear that. Right. But over a year of getting that talked about in a lot of different ways, I could then accept it. So one thing about fear is you don't have to chew off it, all, the whole thing all at once. Just do what you can do, mm -hmm. and that's it. That's all you need to do mm -hmm. when you're when you're you know dealing with fear. Right, one little step at a time, or, yes. or as you say, one bite at a time. A bite at a time, <laughs> which is smaller than a baby step, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's a baby step concept. Yeah, yeah. I love that show. Did you see that one? Uh, was it Bill Murray and he was teaching the uh, Richard Dreyfus character and he was like about baby steps and Richard Dreyfus was some like you know psychiatrist and like Bill Murray would always like drive him crazy. It was a movie, I forgot yeah. the name, but it was really funny. It was about baby steps. Oh, cool. No, I don't. I'm surprised I didn't see that because that was out a while ago when I was really into watching movies. Right? Yeah. 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 You would have seen that one. All about Bob. All about Bob. Oh, 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 oh. The name sounds familiar, but I, I can't, you know, I have so much in here. <laughs> you know, and, and on that point, just let yes. it go. Let it go. That, well, so yeah. I guess I let it go, and that's why it's like Perfect. Uh, bouncing. Perfect. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, I'm already ahead of the game. <laughs> I, I, I quit remembering anything. I, I, in fact, I, if I, I actually put everything out of my brain. I instantly forget it the minute I hear it. You know, it, it's amazing because I found that um, as I'm becoming more me um i'm doing that and it's it's better because there's just too much to hold and it stresses you out but then sometimes i'm like wait a minute i have a fragment of remembering something like that and then i have to work it work it work it till i you know till i totally remember but then that's just mental exercise i guess well when the, and what the line that i use is is that you know um i'll have what i need when i need to have it and if i don't remember it or it doesn't come to me, then I don't need it. It doesn't need to be right. said. Right, right. And so, 
So I just remembered that thing because evidently I needed it, mm -hmm. but I didn't even think of it before. I never held it in my memory. It's just that we were talking and bam, there it is. It drops in place. I say right. it and that's the end of it. I will never remember it again after this conversation. <laughs> will you remember <laughs> this show? <laughs> no. <laughs> Did we talk before? Are you? What's going on right now? You're too funny. <laughs> okay, so your books were auto-written. You were... Um, had a lot of fear about releasing them. So how did you I release that. You did work through that. So that's what I want to talk about. How did you work through that fear? Or did yeah. it just pop open and say, wow, it's actually pretty friggin' cool? Well, um, okay, so the things about fear are this, if you want just the nuts and bolts about fear. First off, um, like all fear are beliefs. Mm -hmm. So if you just transfer that over right now and get that really clear inside yourself, there is no such thing as fear. There's only beliefs. Mm -hmm. There's beliefs that are limited beliefs, fearful beliefs. And that, of course, fear would be more um, an emotion, mm -hmm. right? So the fear would be the emotion that comes up from a belief that feels like, you know, it's something really threatening or mm -hmm. something that's harmful. So you get a fear emotion out of this belief. Mm -hmm. So all fear will go away as soon as you get rid of the, the limiting beliefs that you could then any harm could come to you or anything bad could happen. Mm -hmm. And fear will just go away. Right. So, so really, to get rid of fear, you got get get rid of the limiting beliefs. And so, then fear becomes your friend because now what you're doing is you're always looking for emotions that scare you. So, mm -hmm. anytime you get scared, so you're looking to basically to scare yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween's coming up. <laughs> yes, that's what it is. and that's a perfect metaphor because you know if you go into a fun house mm -hmm. or let's say a, a horror house, a, right. a haunted house. Uh -huh. You go in and you go, I would like to scare myself. But you do it with the knowledge that nothing's really going to happen that's right. that terrible to you, that you can handle whatever's going to come up. Right. But you go in and you scare yourself. And you use that exact metaphor for fear. So what you do is, is you look at fear, it comes up and you go, oh, oh, I'm in a haunted mansion here. Mm -hmm. I'm in a haunted house. And then you go right over and you grab the fear and then you go, what's the belief that's bringing this up? Then you transmute the belief. And the fear goes away, and pretty soon there's no more fear because you've changed every belief that creates fear. You know, next time I um, begin to entertain an idea that stresses me, I'm going to say, Kirk, I'm in a haunted mansion. <laughs> <laughs> and deal with it that way. It yeah. isn't real. It's just a little boogeyman that's supposed to <laughs> like I'm playing with. Yeah. And, and then you like laugh at it, and you go, but. There is a belief down there that is bringing this little boogeyman, causing it to jump out mm -hmm. at me, which is the fear. Right. And then you go, what is that belief? And then, of course, the trick is is having the mechanism necessary to find the belief and then change it. And that's another process that's got to be known. One thing I've learned um, probably in the last year about fear that I love, which is funny, um, is it's fun to get to the other side. And the faster we work on it, the faster it is for us to just instantly release it. It almost doesn't even come in because as you work on it, you're so, you can head it off at the past right away because you can identify what it is, the emotion, the feeling, and then how it can be instantly resolved. Yes, totally. And then it can be fun. It's a game, like yeah. you say. Yeah. yeah. And of course, you know, I'm sure that there are times when, um, as I'll call it, mortal mind or whatever, would love to have me get really, you know, freaked out and scared or whatever um, and stressed out. And then it takes, you know, like two minutes. Instead. No, I'm kidding. Then it takes, you know, <laughs> then it wastes my day. But it's, you know, but then that just means hop back on the pony and, and begin to do it faster again. So it, it can be a game. And fear, there's different elements of fear. There's fear of danger, which um, we always want to be aware of of that we're in our right place and we're always protected which I feel we are anyways you know you really have to adopt that belief right off the bat that that and this the belief is this is that I am completely abundant mm -hmm. see no one really believes that but you you are abundant with what you're creating you're abundantly fearful but you're abundant of something whatever you're it is abundant, creating. yeah you're abundant of, of safety and purity and love and wisdom and and in in the divine's hands, and we are the divine. Yes. Yeah. And and oh. for the people that do study or um, the the law of attraction stuff, it was just something that we did all my whole life uh, manifesting. We called it demonstrating. But um, the thing is, is that what you said—the belief of abundance. If we can, if we have abundance of supply of love, how can we? Um, 
in the fear that comes along, how can we not have the abundance to reverse it? Yeah, and that's the whole point. Uh, we're getting an abundance of what we're putting out. Because what you put out is what you get back. That's the law right. of attraction, right? right? So you're having an abundance of what you're putting out. And, of course, the universe being the graceful universe that it is, mm -hmm. hands you right back what you put out. Yeah. Oh, you're really scared? Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Mwah, lots of fear, you know. Yeah. But if you like, you know what? The world is a loving, beautiful place. Then it can't do anything but hand that right back to you. Right, right. I so love that. you just get what you put back, and then you get an abundance of it. And the more you put out, you get back. And then the point is, is so if you put out fearful ideas, then you get back fear. And so the whole point here is, is to. That's why I say at the very start, you know you got to replace those fear beliefs with like other beliefs and that is is like oh i don't have enough with like i am abundant so mm -hmm. you got to like replace that of course then if you don't really believe it then that isn't going to work either because it's what you really believe right, that, right. about which so you can hold, say it all day long but right it but it's what it's what you hold in your core yeah. in your center uh, and that's the difference between people who are reading and getting information and people who are actually Bringing it into their center, their core, their whole ah, being. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, you, reading about it versus taking action on it, behaving that way, it, mm -hmm. it's a completely different thing. Exactly. I've been practicing this uh, this thing and taking it to the hilt mm -hmm. because I have like uh, recently taken it all the way to the point where I've um, stepped out of mainstream. Mm -hmm kind of uh, living mm -hmm. and where like I don't have money and I don't have a place to live and now I'm just living from synchronicity. But you also have, you're also creating huge, um, your oneness communities? Yeah, and that's transformed into what I now call Harmonious Earth. Okay, which is what your website is. Yes, that's what my website is. Okay, and of okay. course everything will be on in the credits too. But Yes, yeah. That's so harmoniousearth.org awesome. Earth is my is the new website because what I what you know oneness it was good I mean because we all really are oneness and mm -hmm. I wanted to say you know we everyone needs to realize that but then I wanted to be more detailed about it and say you know what is it that we really want, are, are attempting to get happen here and really what we're moving for is or going for is a harmonious Earth that's a very specific thing I would like to point something out if I can and and, yes. and uh, if you're not happy with it I'll edit it out. <laughs> um, I would like to point out that you're not homeless, et cetera, because you don't have income or you don't have money because I've seen the car that you lent your ex-wife. So that's, <laughs> that's be, you know, that thought because people will be like, Ugh, no, this is a man who is um, on a very amazing spiritual journey. And so it has nothing to do with um, not working in order to uh, meet his means. He is meeting his means. They're just not... Um, traditional. Thank you. Yeah, and, it, and the word isn't homeless because my home is wherever I'm at. Exactly. And my home is with the people that I'm with, and they are my community, mm -hmm. and then I do have whatever I need. And it isn't that I live off of just their good graces because, you know, I obviously, you know, have a lot to share as mm -hmm. well. So we all just basically commune together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everything works out. If right. everyone were doing this, by the way, it would be beautiful and, and, it, and it would all just work out. Exactly. Every, if everyone just offered what they have to everyone else, and everyone would have whatever they need. Right. And, and, and really, if we think about abundance and the law of the divine and how everything is ours anyways, it's our birthright, we do have everything we need. It's that limiting it's belief good. of fear that says, I don't have X, Y, and Z. And when yes. you break it down, you have more than X, Y, and Z. You have the whole alphabet. So Yes. I have a I have a definition and it serves me really well and that is you know that I have okay because so the definition of abundance is having what you need when you need to have it. Mm -hmm. Now I said need not what want right mm -hmm. I didn't say have what you want when you need to have it I said what have what you need when you need to have it. So there's another belief that goes with it and that is is that whatever is happening is meant to happen. Mm -hmm. So everything that's happening in my life is meant to happen and that's just the way I look at it. Exactly. It's like this. This thing's happening. My car just got a flat tire. You know, I just got ran into. Um, uh, uh, my alarm didn't go off and I missed my appointment. All of that stuff is meant to happen. Mm -hmm. And then how I deal with it is my lesson, you know, and my growth. Mm -hmm. And so then life is just beautiful. So everything that I need, I have, and whatever is happening is meant to happen. And those two beliefs right there, you could incorporate those. It would be, it's life-changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
I love that. I also believe that um, in our in our abundance that we um, can also have more than what we need. I mean, of course you because, can. Because if if there's a Volkswagen Bug, if there's a Dodge Charger, if there's a Camaro, or if there's a Mercedes, I can choose whichever one I want because it's my divine supply. Of so. course. <laughs> I just want to make this clear because people are going to be like, what the hell are you two talking about? <laughs> okay, and I appreciate what you just said, and I want to add something to that. Please do. And, and because I've been practicing on this. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, like we said, I mean, I came from an environment where I had an abundance of all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, Mercedes and yeah. French chateaus and all of the goodies, you know, of life, right? Exactly. But but then what is interesting is, is that now... Um, I'm finding that the universe, which is me, God, um, is is giving me stuff that I could never have imagined. It's, it's even the, yeah, more it's so than 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 cars and houses. Yes, of course. What it is is it's like a feeling of unconditional love mm-hmm. all the time. It's a feeling of knowing that I have, you know, like the delicious foods that I couldn't taste before mm-hmm. just because I take the time to taste them. Mm-hmm. You know, just simple things like I can look at an ocean and like tears come to my exactly. eyes. Exactly. <laughs> You're living in the moment, the now, the, the yes. of it all. Exactly. And when we do hit that, I mean, I've walked around on my morning walks and literally have broken into tears because the trees weren't just green. They were vibrantly moving and the energy that you see is different and... And then you happen to see the butterflies that come flying around you and, and the things that are unique and gorgeous that you normally wouldn't see. And, and that's the, the life, the path that I also desire too. And um, I remember last year saying to myself, this is what I want and I'm going to not allow anything to disrupt me. I did, but I had to jump back on, <laughs> have back on that train. <laughs> So, so really, I mean, if we were to sum that up, then the lesson is, is it isn't that anything's wrong with the cars and houses and, exactly. you know, fine wines or whatever that is. What it is, is the expansion of that everything else is just as fantastic, mm-hmm. just as amazing, just as exciting. Almost even more because that completeness, that unity that you feel with the divine is just so brilliant. You don't want anything else. Yeah. You want to be in that space of love. Will you share with us? You did something special. You gave everybody an ebook. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> yeah, you me, me said, well, what do you have to give everyone? I say, well, um, it's all on my website. And then, and then she says, yeah, but usually, you know, like there's an ebook or something. I said, okay, well, I'll put it on my website so that you can just go there and download everything, you know, from one spot. That's very cool. Thank you. Do you want to talk briefly about your ebook? Or because we are running out of time. Um, yeah, it, it's just, what it is, is it's um, all of the ideas that make up Harmonious Earth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what, what Harmonious Earth is, 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 is it's a, a blueprint for living harmoniously on Earth. It's a, it's a way that we could live together that way. And it starts with, uh, you know, coming together in physical communities and living in physical communities together. Because right now, everyone's living in separate boxes and doing separate lives, and the idea is to start coming back together physically. How we used to be tribal people. Tribes. That's, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's exactly like that. Just imagine, mm-hmm. like, the Native Americans, how they were tribes. It's more that way, but we do it in a, you know, a modern way right. now. Yeah. But we, have to ha- we need new structures, right. physical structures. We need mm-hmm. completely new mindsets, mm-hmm. completely new monetary systems, mm-hmm. completely new economy, completely new so- social systems. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I go through every one of those in that website and then Wonderful. in that ebook. You can read it all. And then we need new value systems. We gotta all be on the same boat. Like, hey, you know, we value the environment as much as money. Right. Go exactly. Figure. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And if we love ourselves, not just our children, but if we love ourselves then we know a lot of people will return because that's you know, they're not ready to move on. But um, you want it there for you in perfect harmony when you do return. Yes. So wonderful. Any last words? Oh, I just enjoy doing this. I this think. was I, fun. <laughs> I, I, Bridget says, "Well, how come you're doing that?" And I go, "I don't know. I just like you know hanging out with me and talking." <laughs> Brid- <laughs> Bridget is his very artistic daughter who um, travels with him to create these communities, and she's a beautiful being. Thank you. So, and also, I know that she's been more than that in past lives. She's absolutely a soulmate. So. 
It's beautiful. I'm sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt because I was had to give little uh, Bridget a plug there. She's, she's oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had for the for the last summit, the self love summit. I had her piece right up behind me. I changed it to a um, a George Sumner Hawaiian. Uh, oh yeah. First breath of of the whales pushing the hump back, pushing the baby up to the surface. That's beautiful. Yeah, so. the whales the whales are important. They teach us how to live harmoniously. They do. They keep. I've been told that they, the whales and the uh, dolphins carry the same soul, they're the same spirit beings that we are. Yeah, they're the other species on the planet that other, other yeah. people aren't aware. There's two species here, and it's called humans and, and the cetaceans, you know. And, mm -hmm. and the whales are kind of the oversoul of that group, and the dolphins are more like the individual souls. So that's oh, pretty interesting cool. as well. That is wonderful. Yeah. And everybody, you can do research on that. That's very, very cool. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Kirk, for joining us. Thank you. And we'll see you all in the next segment. Bye. Okay.